Hiya folks, Gord Pizer here, and obviously we're, we're not on the water or online. We're in the bush in northwestern Ontario, here in Sunset Country, and I'm with my grandson Liam. And this has become actually a Christmas wintertime tradition for us. And what we're doing, we're actually snaring uh, snowshoe rabbits. And uh, if you've never done it before, you absolutely must. It's, it's just one of the most enjoyable things, one of the most enjoyable ways you can spend an afternoon in the bush. And, you know, right now, Star Wars is the big movie that's going on. And Liam went and saw it the other night. But, you know, the honest truth, this is our movie theater. Uh, when we get out in the bush here, we've got our own popcorn. Uh, we always bring along a thermos of uh, Saskatoon berry blueberry tea. And we just love spending a day walking through the bush. And it's amazing when you take the time, walk through the bush, the story that it tells you. Uh, we're we're going to set some traps over here. And amazingly, we just, uh, we've come across a big lynx uh, that's following some snowshoe rabbits through the bush here. And lynx are kind of one of our foes because when we set uh, snowshoe uh, snares, uh, one of the one of our problems is we come back the next morning and lynx have often got into the uh, into the snare and they've eaten our rabbit and we come back and just find a couple of rabbits feet and a little bit of fur but we don't mind sharing them with the lynx. Anyway, uh, snowshoe hares we most folks call them rabbits but they're actually hares are an amazing animal in the boreal forest and as we go through this uh, short little video here telling you how to do it we're going to show you how to set the traps how to set them up properly and i'll tell you a few little neat little uh pieces of information uh, that i'm sure you've never known about snowshoe rabbits what a marvelous creature they actually are so we're going to have some popcorn enjoy our theater here today in the bush and uh, then we're going to set some traps, and as we do that, uh, we'll talk a little bit and tell you how to set them up properly so that you can get out this winter, spend a day in the bush. I guarantee if you go snowshoe uh, rabbit snaring, uh, you will never, ever just do it once. You'll come back and spend days and days in the bush. It's that enjoyable. Now, Liam, what are you doing there? Oh, I'm packing down a little road for the rabbits to walk on. We're going to set our snare in between these two trees here. So I'm making it a little easier for them to walk through. Perfect. Now where are you going to set your snare? Right, right in here. Ah. So you're, you're making, you're packing the trail down and making it even easier for them to follow, eh? Yeah, just so, like you said, they're, they take the path of least resistance. So I'm trying to pack it down to make it easier for them to walk on. Neat. Okay, so here, I'll give you some snare wire and you show everybody how you set your snare. Sounds good. So the first thing Liam's doing now, he's got uh, brass wire and brass wire, easy, easy to manipulate. And he's tying a little tiny loop right on the very end of the wire here. Liam, you stop there and just show us the end of your wire there, the loop. Oh, very cool. Now, now what are you going to do, loop it through? Yeah. There you go. So now he loops it through. We've got a lot of wire here and we'll snip it off if we need to at the end or we'll put it right around the big tree. Now the other key is in terms of size, how big of a loop that you want. And about the best way to determine your loop size is if your hand, when you make a fist, if your hand can go through it, then it's pretty good. That's about the same size as a snowshoe rabbit's head. So about the about as, as wide around diameter as, as your fist. Now, there he goes. He's going to wrap it around the tree. And Liam, about how high up do you want that snare? How about three fingers high? About three fingers high, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about six inches is usually five, six inches. Then I want to hang it right in the middle. Yes. Perfect looking. Wow, that looks cool. Very cool, love. Let me, I'll get a zoom in here and we'll take a quick peek at that. 
Now, the other thing we always like to do, don't we, is create a little bit of a corral. Yeah. So uh, what we'll do is uh, grab a bunch of sticks. Just sort of block the them. entrance and kind of, yeah, force him to ha have to put his head through that noose as he's coming down the trail. And you want to force them through this so you put sticks around it on the outside. Doesn't take much, does it? Just a few little sticks and they see that path of least resistance. And we've kind of packed down the trail and it's right on where they normally have been walking. Yeah. Now you've got another little trick you do, don't you? Yeah, it's called chin up. What you do is you take a little stick and then you put it underneath. And so when the snowshoe hare are coming through, they will see that stick and they'll put their head up and go right through the snare. Yeah, it's kind of forcing them if they're looking down or they've got their nose kind of to the ground when you put that chin up. It just forces them to lift their head and look ahead and they go right into the, uh, right into the noose there and it's rabbit for dinner. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well done. Thank you. Now the other thing, uh, obviously when you set uh, six, seven, eight, ten snares in the bush, you want to remember where you've set them. So the one thing we like to do is bring a little bit of flagging tape and then we'll just stick a flagging tape right on a small branch or a tree uh, close by the snare. And then when we're walking down our trail, very easy to see where we've set up our snares. And that's as simple as it is. So we set them up in the bush. We've uh, packed down some trails. We've actually got uh, seven snares set today. Seven's our lucky number, so we always usually set seven or nine. Nine's our other lucky number, so we'll set them here. We've got them done now for the day. It's just starting to uh, flurry, a little bit of snowfall. And we'll come back tomorrow, and hopefully we've got a rabbit or two. Oh, Grandpa, we got one. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Very yeah. cool. Nice. Very cool. Oh, wow, there's number two, Grandpa. Nice. Got the second snowshoe hair of the day. Beautiful. Very cool. Let's go back and get a fire going and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about snowshoe rabbits. Sure. Well, look at the size of the feet, eh? You know, that, that, that's why they're called snowshoe rabbits. Uh, they've got feet, giant feet that are just like, uh, actually like snowshoes, why they call them snowshoe hare. Now we've got very, very little snow this winter. And actually snaring snowshoes, uh, the better it gets is when the snow gets deeper and deeper. Right now they're tending to run almost everywhere through the forest here. And they're not really confined to trails, although we got these two on a trail. What other things do you notice when you look at this? Well, uh, really thick fur on them. Eh? Yeah, obviously they've, uh, they've got furred up for a really cold winter. But the other thing to notice, a tiny, tiny tuff of a tail. And most animals in the far north or in, in the wintertime uh, have small extremities. Uh, they've got reasonably large ears, obviously, to pick up danger. But the tail really serves no function on a snowshoe, so it's as small as can be. Now, the other thing, Liam's is much bigger than mine, so his is probably uh, more adult. Mine's probably possibly uh, this year a yearling. The interesting thing about snowshoe rabbits, they'll actually breed four to five times a year. So they can get four litters, five litters in a single season. The other really interesting thing is that females, uh, female snowshoes um, have two uteri, two uteruses or two uteri, and they can actually uh, become pregnant a second time even while they're carrying one set, they're developing one set of, of uh, rabbits, they can actually become pregnant a second time. The other thing that's really, really interesting, and a lot of folks might find this a little bit gross, but it's tough living in the boreal forest here. 
uh, what, what snowshoes feed on are the end tips on uh, poplars or alders. Uh, they'll girdle small trees. They really like second and tertiary growth. Uh, poplars, alders, those sorts of things, willows, uh, that are about 8 to 10 years of age. And they have an, a digestive system, uh, a gastrointestinal uh, uh, system, which is extremely efficient. And within a matter of hours of eating, they're actually starting to drop. And, and their droppings, believe it or not, they turn right around and they will eat their droppings. And be, again, because nutrition uh, is so scarce in the boreal, especially in the winter time, uh, they're smart enough, if you will, to know that their droppings are extremely nutritious. And as I say, as soon as they drop uh, uh, pellets, they'll turn right around and, and re-eat them uh, to get the nourishment that they might have missed the first time through. But Liam and I just love coming out in the winter time. And folks, if you're indoors anywhere in the country, you got to get out this winter and try it. it, it it's amazing, as, as we said at the very beginning, this is our movie theater. We love coming out here and spending the day uh, walking through the bush. You get fresh air, get a campfire going, we'll cook up some hot dogs for lunch. But it's just an amazing experience to come out into the forest here. You give it a try this year, find yourself some secondary tertiary growth, look for rabbit trails, look for those well-worn paths, and then set some snares, come back the next day, and then you're going to possibly, likely, are going to get some rabbits like this. Magnificent eating, and here's the final little tease. I'm going to give one of these to my good friend Cameron Tate. Cameron's the new uh, food uh, uh, cuisine expert for Outdoor Canada magazine. And I'm going to give one of these to Cameron with a challenge, and that is to come up with a gold medal. And Cameron was two-time gold medal Olympic Culinary World Olympic chef. So I'm going to give one of these. I'm going to clean it, skin it out for Cameron, and we're going to give it to him. And the next video we'll post maybe uh, in the next few weeks or a month or so will be Cameron preparing one of these rabbits, and it will taste like the way a gold medal culinary world champion would cook them. So you stay tuned for that. In the meantime, you go out and catch a couple of your own snowshoe rabbits.